time for VUC. In our 11th year, with us on our journey this year, Simwood.com. Simwood can turn you as a developer into a telco. Greenfield Tech. Go to greenfield.tech and see how they can make your tech dreams both feasible and affordable. Our conference bridge is the best you'll ever find. ZipDX.com. VUC.me is hosted on Bluehost. And our worldwide local rate dial-ins are provided by Voxphone.com. All right, and as you as you can see, it's VUC six seventy two for what's it, the Gong Show for November seventeenth, twenty seventeen. We have our old friend who has been with us a couple of times. You could search his name on VUC.me. Craig Walker's with us. Hey, Craig. Hey, great to be here. It's great to see you. And I wanted to say a couple of things. First of all, uh, and I don't have a visual for this, so I'll just switch this over to me and say that we would really appreciate it if you would join our, what used to be VoIP Users Conference, our VUC Kiva group. And you can do that by going to vuc.me slash Kiva. I'm not gonna do a big commercial on that. If you know what it is, join us. We have a terrific group, pretty close to 50 members. We've done thousands and thousands of dollars of good and we keep that thing circulating and that's the way that works. And so hardworking entrepreneurs, funny how there's no word in English for that, uh, such as Mr. Walker, uh, <laughs> but they're in countries where they can't get loans and credit and financing, so that's we help them. Now, I'm gonna introduce everybody and show their faces because there's nothing better than seeing who you're talking to. And I'm gonna start out by alphabetical order. It's Mr. Andy Abramson. Who's going to wave and say hello, or not? Oh, he's he's muted. He's muted. No, it's good. Stay muted. Stay muted. The other Andy is Mr. Andy Smith, and it's terrific to see you, sir. Thank you for. Thank coming. you very much. Okay. Now, next in my line is Mr. Corrado Mela. Corrado. Hello. hello. Buenos aires. Buenos dias. <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Bodie James hello. is with hello. us. Hello, live, live from the UK. Hello. And. And uh, recently from Lisbon with Tad Hack, Tad Summit. Sorry, indeed. You'll tell us about that maybe towards the end, huh? We'll do uh, a little if you're unlucky, yes. Thank you. We are lucky. Mr. Michael Graves is co-producing the session. Thank you, Michael. Hello. Good to see hello, you. Hello. All right, Craig. Craig, I have a question that's not related to Dialpad, and um, I probably asked you five years ago last time you were on, but I want to talk about two seconds on Grand Central. And I, it's not the history or anything. Everybody knows that. But I was confused because I remember that John Todd used to be on the service, and I asked James, John was not involved in Grand Central, was he? No, he was not. Do you remember him? Uh, because you guys were work. Everybody was working on that kind of. Not everybody. Few people were working on this was, very thing, though. Yeah, there were there were a number of competitors in the space, and it wasn't you know it wasn't even frankly a super unique idea. I think AT and T had tried it ten to fifteen years earlier, but just the technology and the time and the accessibility became available. Um, but yeah, no, there, it, it was a really small team. By the time we got acquired by Google, I think we were only 22 people, had only raised a Series A round and had only been alive for like 14 months. So it was a yeah, pretty small team. And I think you have a couple of us were probably on that, assuming there was a free version or maybe it was all free temporarily. It was all free. It was yeah, all so free. We, we were on, in fact, maybe the, my confusion with John Todd, was uh, John became the community manager for Asterisk, Asterisk uh, mm. Digium for years, and he's a good friend of ours. But the point is that the confusion may be that we were all talking to him on that or something. And big buzz around that. And of course, when it got acquired by Google, the only thing I wanted to mention to you is that I spoke to Chris DeBano uh, at an Astrocon. He did a keynote, and I mentioned Google Voice to him. And he said, yeah, well, that's not surprising. There's probably one guy working on it. That, that was like five, <laughs> six years ago, maybe. Anyway, that's yeah, funny. I, yeah, we, we hired a lot of them. And Andy Abramson, uh, who's with us today, said, yeah, well, that's probably because it was so well done that they didn't need anybody to, uh, to maintain it. Anyway. That was well, after, you know, Craig and Vincent built it real good over after 
to 08, 09. And then when Craig left, Vincent stayed. But since then, there really hasn't been much changes. To your question about John Todd, John Todd was with Talk Plus, which was the opposite of Google Voice, whereas Google Voice was one number for life. Talk Plus was going to give you multiple numbers on your handset to dial out. Okay, that makes some sense, although apparently that never filtered through to the second millennium. <laughs> or is it there's third? A lot of, there's a lot of clones of it. Unfortunately, Jeff Black and the team there never pro uh, never went all the way through the patent process. So you have things like line two and others, and it just, you know, can, others created the same idea. It's funny because actually Google Voice hadn't moved almost at all since the acquisition, since it opened as Google Voice. But fairly recently, uh, they evolved, did another UI, and lost a few of the better features. So that's what it, <laughs> what it is. I, yeah, yeah. Well, okay. Well, you should all move over to Dialpad anyway. So and exactly, and that's the transition I wanted to make, Craig. Which is that, and I've said this publicly on Twitter. When James ta was talking about, um, yeah, let's get Craig back on for Dialpad. I go, Dialpad, uh, boring. You know, it's just another. Another, uh... <laughs> and he did say that as well. I said, no, Randy, it is not boring. Just go in there and have a look. And then we spent the next five or six days going, oh, ah, it does this, it does it, that. And, yeah. Uh, so you've changed your opinion now, haven't you? I totally have, no kidding. And uh, it is, it's, it's pretty amazing. Um, I may have a couple of suggestions or opinions on it later, but right now we need to go talk about what it is. And I do agree on one thing that it was well worth discussing it because it's it's uh, probably the most full featured offer of its kind. It's very very interesting. And Craig, I guess you're the man to give us the the basic uh, introduction to it, and then we'll we'll talk more about it and our experiences because everyone here has has played with it, and uh, we, I think we're all kind of impressed. So go ahead, Craig. Great. Well, I, it came. It really came out of Google Voice, right? So Google Voice was all about giving users total control of all their communications from a web UI, basically abstracting all the features to the web and letting you have whatever endpoint you want for your, you know, for the media channel. But at the end of the day, it was how do you use the best of web design and capabilities and and put users in control of their communications. And so that was, you know, that was Grand Central, that was Google Voice. And when we were at Google, we'd always have, we'd always be brought in to talk to Google G Suite customers, companies like, you know, Fairchild or Genentech, who were early adopters of the Gmail for work platform. And we'd show them, and we'd show them basically Google Voice and say, look, hey, this, if we were to do this for enterprise, of these being consumers, these were each one of your employees and they were reachable on their preferred device, wherever they are, wherever they go. Um, would that be something you'd be interested in if we could build effectively the PBX replacement up above it, like departments, time of day routing, skill routing, you know, press one for sales, two for support, all that type of stuff, transfer, boss, secretary, call recording, transcription of messages, all that type of stuff on top, but every single employee effectively looks like a Google Voice user. And the, the thing we found was, one, every single CIO was like, yes, I hate my PDX. Um, number two, my users aren't using it nearly as much. So even though I give them this latest and greatest and I upgrade to like the more expensive phones and more features, they're all just pulling their cell phones out of their pockets and our usage on the things going down. So, so it really like that was the light bulb moment for us of, hey, look, this is a massive market, you know, massive market enterprise communications, totally underserved. You know, people in their in their consumer life have developed their own, like I like the iPhone or someone else likes the Android and they want to talk, use a tablet to, as their main their main way to, you know, to interact. Like basically people have solved an awesome their communications pretty well on the consumer side. And then you go to work and it's like getting in a time machine and they sit you at a desk and put a phone on it with six million buttons and soft keys and stuff, and no one knows how to use them and they're super expensive and they're a pain. So so our, our view was, look, if you're a company that, that has moved to the cloud or is moving to the cloud for your email and productivity suite, you are clearly you are a forward-thinking CIO and you understand the value of enabling your workers to be productive from any device at any time. If you're in that category, it's antithetical for you to then saddle that same now anywhere worker mobile employee with a desk phone. It's just it's like oil and water, it makes no sense. So we said, 
you know, we, we started to do this at Google, and then right around 2009, Google became obsessed with Facebook, put like tons and tons of all the resources went to Google+. Plus. Um, we really thought that this was a better opportunity, so we left Google, actually got funded by Google Ventures, which was nice. Um, so Google's still a big investor, and Rich Miner, the co-founder of Android, is on our board. And we really said, look, let's just focus on making business communications great, because right now business communications are not great, and let's not worry about trying to copy every single legacy feature that Cisco and Avaya invented 30 years ago for a day when people showed up at work at 9 a.m., sat, did their work at a single desk and left at five. Let's build it kind of for this post iPhone world and use the best of the cloud to be able to provision services anywhere worldwide, immediately, simply, reliably, securely, and really build for this, you know, this modern worker. So that's what, in, in a very long way to get to what Dialpad is, that's what it is. It's a software-based, cloud-based, um, mobile-centric, but if you want a desk phone, we'll ring it too. We're not, we're not going to tell you what to do. Ah, there's, there's the Dialpad client on your, on your iPhone. Um, I just wanted to, to show it while you're talking about the very various things. Uh, we'll move it back so that the numbers aren't that apparent. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> trying to get focused, <laughs> focused for one second to see. So we've been, we've been active, and uh, this, this is the point, is that it, you're trying to be kind of independent of the endpoints, and that, that's a great thing. Yeah, exactly. And like, and at the end of the day, we don't, you know, if you want to use a desk phone all day long, God bless you. It has great acoustics. It feels good in your hand. It's heavy, you know, like awesome. We'll ring those too. But for our point of view, like that's end user choice. We just want to provide a service that's ubiquitous, works everywhere. And there are the thing, one of the other things about our architectures, we're built, everything except the media lives in Google Cloud Platform. So every endpoint, every client you have is aware of what's going on on a call at all times. Like, good think of Google Cloud as the brains. And then our telephony platform, we call it a split cloud architecture. We have our own soft switches and, you know, routers and servers in tier one Equinix facilities all around the world to handle the media super, super efficiently. So the media will sound awesome, but it's a really dumb, efficient telephony network that just says, hey, Google Cloud, what do I do with this call? What do I do with this call? So, so that allows you to do things like, hey, I'm on the phone on my cell phone. I come into the office. I press a button and it slides, that live call slides over to my desktop phone. Or I'm talking through my laptop and I got to get out of the get out of the office to go to a meeting. I just tap a button that move that slides over to my um, to my cell phone. Like it gives you like a level of control and visibility that no matter what endpoint you're on, any of the apps are are always aware of it, so you can do like interesting control from anywhere, regardless of what you're talking on. I do have a question uh, that occurred to us today, and uh, it's probably explained somewhere in a fact or doc that nobody read. But uh, Corrado and I were speaking on the phone. He called me, and the question comes down simply to uh, video calls. So video calls are possible on the desktop client only between desktop client. Is that this current situation, or did we? Current situation is current situation is that um, the reason being we hadn't we didn't build WebRTC into our mobile clients for version one it now is so we will be adding the all the all the video back into the mobile devices too. And that's exactly what I said. When I, I told them that we're going to ask you, and Craig will say it's on the roadmap. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's short roadmap. Okay, so it's it's uh, next release or something like that, and that's great. Um, uh, one of the things that I thought was interesting, let me ask, let me let James make his comments or questions because I have a couple of other things I want to say, but they can wait. James. Yeah. Well, comment. Um, the one thing that kind of grabs all of us um, about DARPAD was the, the way in which it's so closely integrated to, uh, um, to, the, to the G Suite and, the, and all the Google services. What we did was we set up a, a new domain, uh, a test domain, specifically yeah. for testing this, uh, and then put, um, put Dialpad on top of that. And in fact, probably one way of actually explaining how it all works is actually, actually just to show you, isn't it? So, sure. Uh, but we so could actually mention the process that we went through, James, which is uh, I, that we, it only functions with G Suite. Right? No, Office 365 as well. Oh, I'm sorry. The exact exact same process but yeah I mean like our, our thought again 
you know, like I don't want to go sell to a CIO who hasn't made the move to the cloud yet for right. his for his email because like it's look if you're not there yet I'll wait till you get there and then we'll sell the yeah, others more than enough people getting there um, but for any company that's moving or has moved to, to the cloud for the productivity suite we wanted to make it for your end users and for you setting it up totally seamless you log in with your with either your G Suite or your Office 365 credentials. Instantly, your address books populated, your company directories populated. We have access to your calendar. We stream in. So we stream in, like, if I'm talking to you, James, it'll show, like, our upcoming calendar appointments. It'll show the last three documents we collaborated on. It'll show the last three emails we exchanged. If I'll get your presence, if you're in a meeting, it'll show me you're in a meeting. If you're on an Uber conference, it'll show me you're on an Uber conference. All that type of stuff just comes natively through that single sign-on. So instantly you have not just a high-quality soft client where you have, you know, good voice and video, but you also have what we call almost social caller ID of like, here's here's what you likely are going to be talking to James about. And then we've even added more stuff to that, like where we have a Salesforce integration. If I'm a sales guy, it'll show me, you know, who owns the lead? What's the stage of the lead? What's all the past activity? When I hang up the call, it'll go log that activity back in Salesforce. And then we did the same thing and maybe we haven't launched this publicly yet. I'm, uh, I have all the beta stuff, but we're doing the same exact thing with Zendesk on the support side of, hey, I'm, on, I'm a support agent, I'm on a call, here's all the prior tickets, and when I get off this call, it's just gonna automatically log a ticket and I can throw notes in there. So, so it's really, how do you pull other cloud services in to make the, the call a better experience, improve your workflows and work processes? And at the end of the day, you know, like, to me, voice is only one part of that communication. It's like, how do we make that even more impactful with with additional information? Oh yeah, LinkedIn's another one. So we need, I was going to say, uh, yeah. when I saw that, yeah, and you're pull, pulling that in. I mean, that is impressive. I, I guess that's mostly effective on, uh, I'm, I'm going to look over on my, uh, uh, on my uh, desktop app. The desktop apps are available for Windows. Obviously, I don't have Windows. Uh, I'm on Mac. Uh, is there a Linux version? Well, I'm, 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 yeah, I'm using it here on my Ubuntu, okay. big Ubuntu desktop. So I'm nice. Not. Yeah, so we have, like, we want, and again, kind of to our theory of letting users choose whatever they want. So we have a, we have a Mac version. We have a Windows version. We have a Chrome app version. So if you're using a Chromebook, like I'm using Chromebook, like exclusively these days, that Pixel book is awesome. Um, so we have a Chrome version. We also have a browser version. So if you're if you just go to dialpad.com slash app, you can live in the browser and have the exact same experience. So really it's up to you, Mr. End user, however you want to use it on any platform you want to use it on. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and it's, and uh, it's, go ahead, James. Yeah, it's the breadth of that integration as well. As, as you as you mentioned, it plugs into just about everything and the the configuration experience is just so different to what we all went through a couple of years ago with our previous organization which was a which is set up as a microsoft um <laughs> link type or, yeah. organized. that was just oh ugh, horrible <laughs> yeah well i mean i think it's it's the blessing and the luck of having you know this is our third this is our third startup in the voice over IP space and the other two were all consumer ones, right? So we kind of approach it as from the end user first of what's this experience gonna be like and if I'm using this product, what do I want it to do? Um, versus a lot of people in enterprise voice approach it from here's the punch list that the IT guy's gonna require in his RFP, let me figure out how to answer that just like everyone else. And, and I think by approaching it that way, you're really able to break out of the path. Yeah. Anyone else have comments or questions, by the way? Okay, well, another comment was the ease with which we were able to um, set up our hardware bits and pieces. So we, mm. because we're the VUC, we've got loads of different lumps of hardware around the place, and we all try to set up different things. So uh, I went and set up uh, one of these little beasties. The yeah, yeah. Uh, a good old OB high, you know, start start at the bottom of the pile and work up with it with, with my analog phone, and the configuration of that was well, it took a little while, I have to say, but but when it got there, um, absolutely faultless, completely integrated into the uh, 
into the dial pad app and desktop. Um, and then other people like Andy, Andy, tell us what you integrated. Yeah, I have a, a an OB. Uh, I could try and uh, pick it, pick the damn thing up, but uh, I, I have an OB thousand series phone here, yeah. um, which uh, also set up uh, e extremely well. If I have one complaint, it would be that uh, I now have one line on a ten line phone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's it, you know what we wanted to do on the. Um, what we want to do, particularly with the OBHI and with uh, and with Polycom, that we support with this kind of call it zero touch provisioning type of a system, is we didn't want to get like the thing that bothered me in the past when you'd get devices is say you're a twenty person company and you buy twenty phones, like they'd you'd get a box with twenty phones that would be like okay this one's Craig and here's like you know the hand this one to Craig and set it up and go through you know the command not the command line but like you know the the right proper URLs and the settings and all this stuff. I wanted it to be, I can send you a box of 20 phones. Everyone can grab any of them. You plug it in, you go to the, go to dial pad and you say, add my OB phone or add my polycom. And it basically says, okay, if it's plugged in and if it's connected to the internet, pick up the handset and enter this four digit pin and it's now bound to you. And it'll restart a couple times and grab all the right configuration files. But you, once again, kind of like you, Mr. End User, Mr. IT, trying to deploy a lot of these things, I don't want you going in and having to enter, you know, giant strings and passwords and domains and ports and all that type of stuff. I want to give you a four digit pin, punch it in, and it's just going to tie to your user. And, and it's an extremely uh, good setup experience. I mean, it now has better facilities, really, than it had before. Yeah. Um, so it, it, I, you, you can't complain about it. it it's, uh, it's just that you, you really need to buy a, a phone to go, go with it rather than use what you've got already. Um, I, yeah, think I will say that we, we just signed up. Uh, we had, so last two months, we signed up WeWork, and we won it from Vonage. And so I think we've, we have reprovisioned over 4000 of their polycom phones to now to now grab the dial pad ui or the dial pad config file and and be back on them so they were able to reprovision but it does depend on on the phone you have because polycom's pretty good um obi is obviously really good but other ones get a little more challenging yeah I, I think it's it's important to just mention to people who may not realize this because here we are all these void people who have been you know active as a hobby and professionals for years but uh, when you're talking about ATAs, the OBHI ATA, the little box that James, you can pick that up and yeah, show one it again, James. Yeah, one of these. In other words, it's not a phone. Oh, they, they do let, bigger ones as let well. Let me yeah. put the focus. I have one, but um, it's yeah, not within reach. There you go. That's the newer one. So these boxes are ATAs, and ATAs, what they do is if you happen to have like 60 phones, analog phones in your business or something, um, particularly if they're like good decked phones, you know, those things, hey, you've got your phones. Why buy a whole new um, you know, a bunch of uh, supply of phones when you've got those, so you can get these ATAs and OB High, which uh, transparently merges with your dial pad account. Uh, what that does is it, it over the it, people are comfortable with their analog phones, they hook the analog phone up to the OB High. The OB High does the thing that Greg descri Craig described uh, with a simple code that you call a number and it configures yourself. They do that well, and then you're done. So if you happen to have a bunch of analog phones, this is the way to go. And and I don't think that was obvious to people who may not have understood yeah, what it, the ATAs are. You know, you know what we see a lot of use for it is when people have like a lot of like those those analog polycom sound stations in a conference room, and those are really nice phones, and they like they have great acoustics and great microphones and everything, and they were relatively expensive when they bought them. So putting an ATA in a conference room to turn that analog, you know, conference phone into a dial pad room phone is a uh, is one of the most common use cases we see for the ATA. You also, you also got something like this. A lot of us have these. This happens to be a very old uh, Siemens uh, 67, 68H. <laughs> I still have two of these that work well. Now these things connect beautifully to the OB High stuff. So there's James. Wait a minute, let me because I'm talking. Yeah, well, well, I have a. He has a newer. Oh, that's the hipper. Ah, oh, the gigaset. Uh, yeah, and, my, and mine is even engraved. Look at that. It's got my name on it. <laughs> oh, 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 James, you've always had the best toys. I have anyway, one too. Yeah, we uh, Corrado has one. We all have one. Well, look, somebody yeah. left a message, and I think it's me leaving myself a message here. Anyway, <laughs> point is, these things work really well with that. And so now I've got the you know dial pad account. 
And by the way, this is a way around the single line thing is that this thing still has all the lines it had, but if it's connected to the OBI, if I connect it to the OBI, it, it has all its lines plus the OBI. So that, because OBI is like a, I don't know how to make this clear. It's as if it was an analog phone, right? So you have whatever other lines were in existence before. It doesn't blow yeah. away any of the other conviction. Uh, and we'll, configure. And we'll push all the dial pad features and functionality down through that through that OB high line as well. So you can do all the like take it here, you know, transfer record, all those, all that type of functionality is all living in that one OB high line. Yeah. I'm amazed. Course, I'm amazed that Google never bought OB high because we always used to joke on the show here that uh, OB high really is the Google ATA. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, like <laughs> they made a great business off turning Google Voice into a home line, right? And they're, and, uh, and, but I think, you know, like Jan and Sherman, they've been acquired by Cisco twice, like Sapura and Komodo, I think. Komodo, so, watch Komodo yeah. Yeah, we're the, we're the two times we got bought before. So I'm, I'm thinking third time's a charm. They'll, they'll end up back at Cisco eventually. Well, I still reckon Google, but you probably have more information. I, I have no idea. I'm just going by history. <laughs> Well, I don't think Cisco would be silly enough to buy them a third time, would they? Yeah. Well, I think they had a two-year lockup the first time, a four-year lockup the second time. So this would be like a six or an eight-year lockup. Yeah. Well, they have they do have a knack of producing some incredibly feature-rich bits of kit at the right sort of price as well. So yeah. Yeah. So are we going to show something <laughs> yes. today? Yeah. Um, I, well, you you've got the the sharing bit, haven't you? Uh, well, it depends on what you want to share. I can share my, let's see, if I go to my inbox. I, uh, these numbers are probably temporary for us, so I guess there's no big deal in sharing them. And uh, when <laughs> oh, we talk to... We're going to get loads and loads of uh, people trying to... Well, I that. do get lots of photos from young ladies in Russia, but I <laughs> somehow don't think they're actually... Anyway, let's see if we can... Well, while, you, while you're setting that up, um, can I ask one of our, our of traditional course. questions, uh, which I think I know the, both the answer and the rationale behind, but uh, I'm going to ask it anyway, um, which is that we love wideband codecs. We mm -hmm. adore wideband codecs, yet, of course, PSTN is still stuck on 7-Eleven, um, and this appears to... Uh, to use solely 7-Eleven at the moment, it's, uh, even for internal calls. Uh, what's your rationale behind that? Yeah, actually, we use uh, we use the Opus codec. So Ooh. yeah, if you're um, so obviously we have to we have to make it work with Seven Eleven on the PSTN line. But if you're going, you know, dial pad to dial pad, that's all that's all Opus to Opus. Well, and you know Opus, right? It's a adaptive variable codec. It'll take as good of a bandwidth as it can. It'll adjust it on the fly as it as it shrinks or grows. Um, but no, like that's that is. We love the Opus codec. Like that was one of the best things. You know, when when Google bought Global IP Sound, right? They they put all that stuff into the WebRTC spec and allowed us to use it. I mean, back in the old days, like the Grand Central days, we could never afford the license for Global IP Sound. So we were stuck with with the stuff that was available. You know, we couldn't even use 729 on the on the narrowband stuff. So um, so having Google, you know, open source that stuff was amazing and also the the gips voice engine too so so now we we use that as much as we humanly can i, I must admit i hadn't noticed that, that that opus was there um clearly i haven't played with it enough yeah anyone would <laughs> think that you've been out of circulation for the last week and a half yeah well, there you go. <laughs> well we did we did see hd voice i think is what it says or hd there's an hd something when when somebody calls we saw that yeah too. but yeah, on your mobile phone, what we do is when you when you place a call, you have an option, send it over the carrier network if you're not in a place with great data coverage, or use basically the HD voice option, which will use your data connection and give you the Opus codec on it. And, you know, strikingly better quality when you're on the HD one, but obviously not everywhere has awesome data coverage. And also, Tra Craig, you're, talk you're talking to everybody who's in Europe here. And we should yeah. mention that right now, this is available to companies in the United States, the continental United States, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, what, what is the on that? yeah, U.S. and Canada, although we're selling to multinational corporations that have offices all over the world. So, um, like, we, we, we have a subsidiary in Japan that handles 
the whole Asia pack. We just signed a huge deal in Singapore. Um, but primarily, most of our focus obviously is North America right now. Um, but, you know, like Motorola is a customer, Uber is a customer. We have, you know, they have, they have offices in 48 countries where we have numbers and, and service. And then we ended up putting, um, putting our telephony engines and our voice, basically our voice network in data centers around the world. So we have nine data centers on four continents right now. So we have four in the US, one in Amsterdam, one in Hong Kong, two in Tokyo, and one in Sydney. And then we're putting one in Sao Paulo to, to pick up Latin America. And so we have a, a very robust kind of like worldwide voice quality network. And then again, it's you accessing the Google Cloud, which is effectively everywhere for, you know, for instructions. Um, so it is a worldwide plan. The, the question is just, okay, when do we actually go and sell directly in those markets? And I think when we do do it, the like UK is going to be number one. Okay, and our, James. Yeah, yeah, well, good. I think we can probably help you good to know. perhaps with... Uh, uh, James just uh, tried to call me, but then he hung well, up. Well, go well, ahead, James. Well, well, I, I wanted you to change the focus to the uh, well, to your, your screen. Well, there it I'll is. Just do it again, just to, to, just to demonstrate Please. what happens. Please so I'm here with my analog phone connected to my ATA, oh, and I'm going to go off hook, and I'm going to dial Randy. Okay. Uh, it's and, all visible, so yeah. don't worry. And look, I've gone red. I've gone red, and what's happening? So you've got the option. Oh, wait a minute. I can't, I can't uh, show the – I'll just answer. Oh, you're not seeing the notification. Well, we won't okay. because it's not in the same window. Um, there we go. And right. There we are, and there are all my details popped up. Uh, unfortunately, because Randy hasn't populate, uh, hasn't connected his LinkedIn and his Google Calendar. And all I'm that. not. I quit LinkedIn. But let's um, <laughs> move on from that. Uh, yes, that is, now, a that is a photograph of me at the age of about three. And can I? I haven't changed, have I? Can yeah, I yeah, transfer this? Good. Can I not transfer this call now to my cell transfer? Um, yeah. No. So to. Transfer to your cell, you pick up your cell, and on your app, on your cell, it'll say, take it here. Right, so it's see. basically you're pulling versus pushing. Where is... Uh... Yeah, go to your cell. And... Well, first of all, <laughs> you have to go now to... you got to find your cell phone. Yeah. No, no, I've, yeah, first of all, I have to find this phone. No, I've got the phone. Oh, active... Okay, active call. Unfortunately, I can't show it all at once. No, active I thought... Call well, and switch... I, I, all right, I you let me... Let me... Take it, Lenny. Hold on a second, Lenny. I'm I'm Lenny. Hold on a second. Let's do this. Let's do it like this. I'm gonna go back to my. Okay, so here's what's happening. You can't quite see it, but believe yeah, me. So it's, the, it's so the mobile app knows you're on a call device. elsewhere. Yeah, and it has a button that says switch to this device. Right. I'm trying to trying to make it visible, but I can see it's not. But anyway, the point is this button says switch to this device. We're going to switch to the device. And and, and look, there, there I look, am. There's James at three. My dodgy little face, hey? And it also <laughs> says, it also says HD. Okay, we almost have where well, you can read it. Yeah, HD call on top, which is unbelievable because I'm using a, a, a an ATA which doesn't support HD. Um, but there we go. <laughs> well, I'm HD. That's <laughs> yeah. His his leg is <laughs> HD. Your, your leg is HD. But, All right. So uh, and uh, the icons on here are of course mute, hold, dial. So you can dial somebody. So you're going to transfer me, transfer me somewhere else. So yeah, yeah. Go to the go back to the desktop and transfer me somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, switch call. So and the I was desktop. About yeah. Well, we, we, well, you James. Hold on a second. Let me let me pull yeah, back. Randy, to the, Randy, you don't need to transfer it back to the desktop to control it from the desktop. That's part of the beauty is you can yeah, still I, hit transfer from there and it'll control the call. Even I was actually not on going that. to show because it's more readable and then it says switch call to this device. Yes, you can also transfer from here, but if I do this, it knew that, that there was a call, turn, and, then yeah, it turns blue, and then you're back, and then see the phone icon in the middle bottom, right. the arrow, tap that, and then you just type the name or just select. Those are your most frequent callers there. All right, below. let's try. Uh, but, yeah, you could have just hit the, hit the Corrado oops. button. Well, I wanted to. Well, yeah, I guess I could, yeah. huh? Oh, Corrado's ready to share too. Yeah, the Corrado no, button. There he is. Look at with, this. With, with a little Corrado. What's button. that? Transfer now. Line transfer. Big tip. Imagine and that. I've got ringtone in my hand. Fabulous. Fantastic. Yeah, and then imagine that. You've been transferred. It's like the most impossible feature for anyone using a PBX to pull off is now you know, my eighth grader can do it. 
that is funny too because it's always you know how do i <laughs> when you get a call i mean 20 years in voip and you get a call and you want to do a conference call on the polycom <laughs> oh my god like you can call any business in the world and say please transfer me to your coworker," and they're gonna say i'll try but in <laughs> exactly. case i lose you exactly. let me give you his direct number right exactly yeah and, and, totally. and I, I guess you can do um a whole i'm gonna hang that up uh, a whole load of things you can do like when certain people do call you you can transfer automatically to to lenny or or <laughs> it, yeah it, it, well or there's a lot of stuff it's Randy uh, is our version of it. <laughs> I'm Lenny. All right. But, but before we do that, James, let's take a quick look at, I think it's a good time to look at the analytics. And I'm going to pull that up. Oh, yeah. The analytics. Uh, because because, the, anal because <laughs> the analytics for the VUC. <laughs> very Google-esque. Are very, uh, okay. Look at that. Anyway, oh, this is today. Oh, my goodness. Today. All right. So we've got, look at this. We've got Randy, James, Corrado, and Michael on the I'm, uh, I'm just amazed that we haven't had any external calls from people on ZipDX and things like that. Oh, uh, they're the yeah, because of that. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is of course if it was a real enterprise, there would be some interesting information to get from this and I think uh, Craig, one of the things that that I was looking at here is that you could actually for better or worse, you could be looking at those statistics and think well hey james i don't know what he's doing but he's actually not on the phone very much and uh, that's his job so yeah well uh, i mean that. That, that that view and those analytics are super important they're important for for two things number one for the it guys because they want to make sure that people are using the platform they're providing and not just using their own personal cell and so if one of the interesting things we've been able to see like Okay, the Motorola, for a great example, they had a bunch of old PBXs. They saw declining usage on the PBX. They put in Dialpad, and then they see this increasing usage, and almost you know, uniformly across the the whole organization worldwide. But then you can start to see interesting thing like sixty three percent are using the desktop client app, and twenty five percent are using their mobile phone app, and a very small percentage, like sub ten percent, are actually using desk phones, which is which is great because we have a mantra around here of like killing the desk phone, and to us it's kind of a boat anchor of the past. But when you think about that. A, you know, a 20,000 person company that's been able to go around to 15,000 of their employees and remove a $500 desk phone from their desk and no longer have to support it. That's an awesome IT win. And the stats back that up. Um, so that's number one. But number two, kind of like to your, your joke where you were messing with, um, messing with James is if I'm running a call center or if I'm running a sales organization, hey, I want to see the activity of my sales reps, like how many abandoned calls, how many missed calls, average call time, how many inbound versus outbound, how many are going to voicemail. And then even more interesting, I want to take those same sales reps, look up their records in Salesforce and compare and say, oh, hey, look, the guy who's sold the most is actually the guy who's on the phone the most. Hey, imagine that. Let's let's train the people who are selling less to behave more like the people who are, are selling more. And so it really gives you you know, a real ability to manage your business better. I agree. And I wanted to mention something in passing here, which is that uh, because I have a long experience of these selectors and there's a lot of items on the selector and that's wonderful that it says yesterday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, there doesn't seem to be a custom range. And if I wanted to investigate an incident that happened uh, Wednesday and Thursday, you know, it's from November 15th to 17th when we had some special event happening, that actually would be useful. Just mentioning that yeah, in passing. Yeah. No, I, believe me, I have a, uh, I have a long, long <laughs> list, list of roadmap <laughs> items. Of, and, and I call them like the last 5%. Like right. to me, like the last 5% is what makes a product go from great so, to amazing, right? Someone so, hey, you're getting a call. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's working. Um, but yeah, no, so so the one thing we do let you do is just download the CSV of mm -hmm. effectively every single stat. So if you ever right. need to go slice and slice it and dice it the way you want, feel free to pull it down into Excel, run pivot tables, do you know, do what you need. Um, but but our analytics and everything else is always always improving. And I'd say that is one of the differences between our architecture and you know, say like a Ring Central or some one of those like first generation competitors to the PBX is our stuff with that with that Google Cloud 
platform really allows us to be more more like a software company. So we do we do constant innovation. Like we do a push every single week. It goes to our internal beta on Tuesday and it goes to to all of our users on Friday. And so when a when a new employee comes in Monday morning, there's a little refresh button on the app. You click it and magically you have more features. And that is like that is a perpetual um, that's a perpetual thing. And so we've started writing a monthly innovation blog. So at the end of every month, we're like, okay, here are the 17 features or fixes that we did in the last month. And so like, if you start looking back on it, it's just this, this running list of perpetual improvement, which is the beauty of a SaaS product, right? Like it only gets better and better and better. And then the last thing is having built it on um, the WebRTC platform, you know, Google's got a hundred guys in Stockholm and in Kirkland effectively working on that all the time. And every six weeks when they do a new version of Chrome, you know, things magically get a little bit better. And so when they switched from VP8 to VP9, my guys didn't write a single line of code. Like every end user just needed to hit refresh and all of a sudden their video got twice as good. So, so it's this awesome benefit of just having an ever improving platform as well as having kind of like a software, you know, microservices architecture where we can just push updates every single week without touching our telephony infrastructure. Okay. I'm getting buzzing on my watch. I've got a got phone <laughs> over there, a phone over here. And I don't know who this is that's testing. Uh, maybe it's one of the people in the Hangout that's doing the testing, or is it somebody else? No, okay, I'm sorry. I, I, I just wanted uh, to, to, just to make sure. Well, wait a second, James. I, let me uh, say what this is. So somebody said, does text works? And I said, absolutely. And testing you see. Uh, however, the question somebody asked is their group text, and I wanted to get into text more completely because because um, James and I tried some texting, and for one thing, you can talk to well, we use Google Voice uh, because I've got a number in the states, but you can actually do SMS between uh, normal numbers, but you can also, of course, do texting on the platform itself. And yes. I have so many different notifications. Go ahead, Craig. Let's talk a little <laughs> about, about the messaging and the, because you know you make the call. Okay, the person is not available. You leave your voicemail, but text is actually the new voice right today. So we need to get yeah. into that a little bit. What are you doing with text? Yeah. So so this was actually a project we started working on at Google Voice in about 2008, and it took like to get all of the North American carriers to agree to allow texting and full MMS and group MMS and, and SMS functionality on a landline number took quite a while, but thank God we started it then because around 2014, like for North America, it became kind of totally ubiquitous and available. Um, so you have your dial pad number can, obviously you can, you can message an IM you know, internally to other Dialpad users because that just stays in, you know, in the IM framework. But the, your numbers are also fully textable, MMSable, group textable to the PSTN or to, you know, so they behave exactly like a mobile number. So if you were to like, you know, I was thinking maybe sharing my screen, but it might be some crazy text. But anyway, the, uh, the, the, um, the point being is, we believe that the future is going to be much more companies interfacing with customers, with support and sales and random type questions of like, what are your hours? What's the directions? Things like that. That can be much better handled by text. And you have, you know, you have, you have use cases like higher education where, you know, like literally my daughter's a freshman in college. She, she was born in 1999. Let me tell you, she is not talking on the phone, answering email, you know, listening to voicemail, none of those things, you have to text them. And so for, for a school or a, the registrar's office or the administration or a professor or a teacher's aide to be able to communicate with their, their higher ed students, they have to be able to text. Prior to Dialpad, the only way they could do that was giving out their personal cell phone number, which, you know, like the last thing I'd want to do as a professor at like a big school is give 700 freshmen my personal number and they just destroy me like 24 seven. So it, it lets you have that full functionality through a landline number and then you keep the full privacy of your personal number. And I did share that screen for a second. I don't know who's calling though. So I don't know whose number I was showing up there, but whoever it was, <laughs> that was texting me. And it's probably somebody that is complicit in all this, but the point is uh, it does work and it works very well. And, and James and I tested that the first day and we were quite impressed. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Well, no, it is. I mean, like, and it's one of those crazy things where, where, you know, some countries actually have 
a range, a different numbering range for their mobile numbers, like Japan does. You can tell it's a mobile number because it starts a certain way. But North American numbering plan, they all look the same. So how am I supposed to know whether I can text or not text a particular number? It seems crazy that some would have functionality that others don't. And somehow or another, I'm supposed to guess that because the guy doesn't reply. And then I'm like, oh, maybe that wasn't a textable number. It just seems weird. They should all be textable. Absolutely. And uh, can Couldn't I just point more. out that we, we actually made geographic numbers textable, um, so landlines textable here in UK about well, 14 years ago, I think. Yeah. Really? Nice. Yeah. And so yeah. if you have a, a phone on the end, like a, like a Siemens Gigaset, which is SMS capable, it comes up on the phone just like a normal text message. But if you don't, then... Um, the, It'll read it call. to you? Yeah, it It'll rings call. up and then yeah. reads it to you. Um, we have that here too. And, and originally, um, the original BT one was the voice was done by Tom Baker, who played Doctor Who in his Doctor Who voice. <laughs> um, here, if you do it, if you send a text in English, it reads it pretty badly, actually. In in <laughs> yeah. yeah, so there's a group of people who just had nothing better to do than just to make Doctor Who um, do say the most outrageous things. That's uh, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and you could get um, tone of voice as well by putting uh, kind of punctuation in, so you could make it go up and down. Nice. Um, yeah. yeah. Nice. That's Hours fun. Pun. Anyway. Yeah. No, the, the, the text piece, even though um, on first in inspection, it's a tiny little bit of functionality, um, the impact of it is enormous. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And like, and the nice thing is when you marry that to the presence. So since we know your coworkers are in a meeting or they're on a call, like, and we'll show you that live as it changes. It's like, hey, if you're on a call, I'm not going to call you. If you're in a meeting, I may call you, maybe not, but I'm certainly going to be able to text and ping and say, hey, I know you're in a meeting, but are you free to, you know, are you free to talk afterwards or something like? It gives it just like takes it to the next level. And really, there's so many use cases of of, you know, like think of like a realtor spending all their time out in the field and, and talking to clients and showing homes and stuff like that. That's done a lot by text and, and realtors generally usually give out their personal cell number. And then, you know, the company that hires and pays for the cell numbers has no visibility, has no access to like the client list that realtor leaves and then takes all their clients with them. So it really does kind of tie it back to like the organization as opposed to the individual. Yeah, and, and you can do things like you can have one person with multiple uh, identities, or you can have a group of people all sharing an identity, which, of course, is very difficult to do with a conventional um, cell phone number. Yeah, like that, that is one of the things. Like, you're, you're, like I could set up a support department or a sales department, and if someone were to text that department, that message would be available to every every op all quote unquote operator in that department. So you set up your, you know, your sales or support team to be operators and all of a sudden, you know, they can, they can handle the, handle the inbound send outbound and like just kind of keep the whole communication going from a department level as well as the yeah, individual. And of course you, you have a full uh, audit trail, the record, the history is all there. And of course it's in the cloud, so you can't lose it or easily delete it. Yeah. And Unless, yeah. of course, you want to. So one of the things we do is we've sold to larger and larger enterprises. They're like, hey, whoa, 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 we don't want this sticking around forever. Make sure we have admin capabilities to purge it at a set schedule. So we do that as well. Yeah, I don't think we mentioned this, by the way, because it's obvious to everybody on this call. But um, when you set this up, you are, if you go to Dialpad, there's a, is it a 15-day trial, I think, Craig, or 12? 15, yeah, it's a two-week right? trial. Two-week two trial. Day. 14 days. So uh, when you go set this up, you use your credentials, as we said, from uh, G Suite or the Microsoft offer, whatever that is. Um, but the point is that you will get a main number for your organization. And then, uh, again, obvious to anybody who's worked with PBXs, you can route this to different departments. You can create departments. You can create assistance. Let's talk about assistance for a second. It's an interesting concept. And I think that uh, it's something that you've brought that I haven't actually seen elsewhere much. Um, so I've got my main number, which is, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, whatever it is, you dial that number. So you can obviously have voicemail. Yeah, you've reached the Ajax widgets company, blah, blah, blah. But you can also have four or five people 
who are going to be uh, rung on that and so on. What is the assistant concept? Let's get into that for a second. Yeah, so there's, um, and it's interesting, it, when we started selling to larger enterprises that, you know, like a whole lot of them are like, great, this is great, reach me everywhere, I'm, I'm, I'm fantastic, you know, I'm more productive, et cetera. But then there's, there's a segment of the, the generally older, more seasoned executive who's like, what? Like, this has to ring my assistant, I don't answer the phone, and my assistant has to transfer it to me if it's important. And so it's basically the boss admin functionality. So the way we set it up is when you go through, you can either request to be anyone's admin or you can request anyone to be your admin, and they'll get a notification saying, you know, approve or deny. And if, if they approve and you have that pairing, then if someone, say I'm the boss, someone calls me, my admin screen is going to get the call. It's going to be a different color little like header on the box. So they know it's a call to Craig and it'll say a call to Craig, you know, from James Brody. And then they'll have the full functionality, whether to take that call, eavesdrop on that, like, cause one, one feature we have, send it to voicemail and you can actually listen to the voicemail while it's being left. We used to call that at Google voice, listen in, but you have the, the ability to do that, grab the call if it's important. And then that's when you can, you can use that whole transfer function that you showed earlier of, hey, I want to transfer this up to the boss, but do I want to ask him first, do you want this call? Do I just want to send it cold? Do I want to send it to their hold queue and just say, hey, you know, James is on hold online, what, whatever? Or do I want to send it directly to the boss's voicemail? And like those, through a PBX, that would be nearly, you know, like black belt jujitsu to be able to pull off those four moves. But since it's in a UI on a web, you know, app, it's like those are just four buttons. How do you want to do it? And then you just click it, and it just works as you'd, you'd anticipate. So the the boss admin one's been been great, and it's helped us get you know more legacy companies comfortable with it because they're not fully giving up all that comfort for again probably like you know the baby boomers or older generation who who feel you know who've lived a whole life of of having other people answer their calls for them um but it is it's yeah it's it's a neat functionality yeah what we need next is some kind of artificial intelligence bot to uh fulfill that function so you don't yeah. actually have to have a human being doing that call filtering yeah, there's. I think there's. There's so much interesting stuff we're going to see over the next couple of years in the in the artificial intelligence and machine learning side. Like, like the way I look at it as it would. How awesome would it be? So, I, if you look at like, think of a call center or a traditional like agent relationship, whether they're sales or support. Like the way it works, generally state of the art today, Genesis, Talkdesk, these types of companies, it, five nines. Let's say, like I'm a supervisor and I see like my 20 agents and here are all the active calls. Okay, that's good. Like I can, I can randomly listen in on these 20 calls and like whisper advice to the guy and like randomly check in and, and audit them afterwards. But it would be awesome if I had some artificial intelligence that would be like, these two calls are going terribly. You know, like these are the ones to get in on, right? Like some sort of sentiment analysis, some sort of ability for, you know, for me as a supervisor to know more or, Hey, how do I, how do, how do you use artificial intelligence to power the, the end user agent on the fly without a live coach in his ear, but being able to say, Oh, this guy just said that. Okay. Here's how we, here's what our response is when people say that. And so I think like, you know, like that's where, that's where things are going to get really interesting over the next couple of years, because I think that whole machine learning thing is just kicking into gear and, and it's going to change all of that kind of like agent relationship type stuff. Right. Yeah, absolutely right. You've got a platform here that has got legs. You can take this and do so many things with it. Which so, is so, so um, there are a couple of things here that are quite obvious. And that is that uh, if I was a, a Cisco call manager salesman or, or an Avaya salesman, I would be seriously worried because <laughs> this, yes. this is really good. And if I wasn't a Microsoft house, um, I would. I, this is entirely the sort of thing that, that, that we'd, we'd be looking at, I would think. But and um, we're not that we are a Microsoft house. Um, Office 365. Yeah. But <laughs> ha, have you got any plans to white label this? Are you going to put the, put this out for for other people to sell as well, or are they going to be selling uh, for you? Yeah, we we want to keep the brand and we want to be the provider. We do have. We built. We just hired a great guy about 
four months ago to, to build our channel partnership. So we have a great partnership with Sprint, we have a great partnership with Google, um, but we now have a really strong partnership with Soft Choice, and we're adding a number of additional resellers. But we've always wanted to be, you know, we've always wanted to be the product. I, what I don't want to be is just a, a minutes guy behind the scenes or a license guy behind the scenes. I want it to be Dialpad everywhere, and I want to be, you know, I want to build that brand. Yeah. Well, uh, another thing that I think you do need is much, much closer integration with uh, mobile networks to be able to get yeah. in there, get up clo close and personal with the uh, with the mobile signaling, because then you can pull so much information out of mm -hmm. that and use it. So, for example, a guy's mobile, where is he? Uh, and the yeah. realization, this guy is just about to go into the road tunnel. So... Um, you're going to have to do something about it, sort of thing. So many things you can do with do, do with it. Yeah, it would be that would be fantastic. Even being able to do the auto switching from so so I've mentioned on our on the mobile app, you can place a call through the carrier network or over the HD data network. But the other thing too is you can also press that much like the take it here button. You can also switch it between the two. So from the app, you can tap it send it over to the carrier, send it back to HD, send it over to the carrier, send it back to HD. If I knew you were about to enter the Holland Tunnel or something, that'd be awesome if it just did it ahead of time. Yeah. Well, I think we can do that. Uh, if only so, so, I knew so, someone. Yes, if only you knew someone who uh, had uh, <laughs> access to the global diameter. If um, only. I, 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 if, only good thing, like, if only. If only. Yeah. And Let me for VC. Yeah, next VUC, James is going to tell all the secrets on that. No, I'm not. No, definitely not. <laughs> Absolutely, you're not. All right, it's, I, think it's, I think it's high time to make sure that we have covered all the questions and everything else. And I know that while we're waiting for questions on IRC or on ZipDX, where you're going to hit star six, see, that would be a thing that you wouldn't have to guess at if you were. Yeah, I'm <laughs> now, Pat, um, and the question is, is Eric still there? And what is Eric doing for you? Our good old good friend, Eric Lagerway. Good question. He's on, v he's on ZipDX. Eric, come in, Eric. Over. No, he's gone into the Holland Tunnel. Oh, he's in the, like, yeah, he's well, well, I'll, okay, well, I'll answer, I'll answer what I think he's doing for us. <laughs> <laughs> no, Eric says, uh, so, so as you know, Eric's uh, a longtime friend and industry kind of guru in, in, Next Gen Communications. So um, Eric joined us to effectively launch and start our Canada operation. So he now kind of runs our, our Vancouver, BC office. We now have 30 employees up there. Um, it's kind of like my preferred preferred office for hiring engineers right now. Um, and like we have sales is now all in Austin. Uh, engineering is primarily in San Francisco, but as we grow, we're growing much more up in, in the Vancouver area. And so Eric's, Eric's also running certain product type stuff with Vincent Paquet. So Vincent's our chief product officer. Eric's one of our product managers, but he's, he's helping us with integrations. So his team does all the third-party integrations with Zendesk, uh, Salesforce, ServiceNow, effectively the long tail of all the other CRM platforms we're going to integrate with. And then he's also, also – God bless me, raise his hand to help and be the PM on our billing platform so we can get all like all the things we want done with promos and discounts and bundles and partner things. And like let me tell you, like, because we have we have prepaid, postpaid, variable, you have international calling, you have recharges, you have like there's just so much around the billing side that actually it takes a really seasoned guy to make sure that that gets done right. And then he's also handling all the polycom and um and Obi High and all of our hardware integrations too. So, okay, so, so and then so not amongst much other really. stuff. Not yeah, much. Yeah. I mean, you need to yeah. do all of that in the morning or something like that. Yeah, well, you know, for Dialpad, that's only half a job. So, you know, like I'm going to have, you know, he cleans <laughs> the office and like it does the catering as well. Yeah. I think it's I, worth mentioning that if you are uh, looking to come to the UK, we there are a lot of people in the VUC and associated, not just directly like James or Andy, but. Uh, other people like Dan Jenkins, who's in IRC, and um, there's a lot of help available if uh, if you're looking for any of that. So we'll be I'll coming. Just drop that. We'll, we'll be coming. <laughs> okay. Again, anything that we've forgotten? Are there questions on IRC? Questions on uh, R6 to unmute on <laughs> ZipTX? Yeah. 
Well, I, yeah, uh, Craig, are we going to see you over in Europe sometime? I mean, you personally. Come and eat the world, cough. No, no, no yes. or even, <laughs> or even um, com, com. Dan's thing, yes. Do you know about com, yes. com? You guys, you guys got to let me know where and when I need to be. Like, unfortunately, we have so we have like the day after or two days after Thanksgiving, I'm off to Tokyo and then to Singapore and then back to New York. Um, so, like, I, I find myself going to our our subsidiary to the east or to the to Asia much more frequently than going to Europe Your right now. Is calling. Yeah, someone's transferring you a call, James. <laughs> Yeah, well, well, it'd be great to have you over at, at ComCon. ComCon is all really all about getting the right people in and exchanging ideas. It's I would not, love it. I would it, love it. It's not about selling. Well, I suppose that you could sell product there, but it's not really about that. It's all about um, recharging your your bright, wild, wacky idea bank. Um, ComCon.xyz. C O M M. C O N dot X Y and, uh, and it's go it is going to be absolutely awesome. I mean, we're talking about things like um, giving everybody who turns up uh, a personalised SIM card, a special event SIM card, which will work on the <laughs> event 4G network. And then we've got um, the official cocktail drink of VoIP developers. Yes, Sip Smith will be running a, <laughs> uh, a cocktail bar there. I mean, it just goes on, and this is going to be awesome. Uh, yeah, that's good. Well, we, I, have, I have like 750 people from Rotorola in Basingstoke who are, who are happy users, so I'll, maybe I'll swing by there and, and visit them along the way. Yeah, well, we, we, that's right. We'll start planning now to give you a good excuse to be in the right place at the right time. What are the, this is uh, quite a ways away too, James, so this may actually... It this is, may actually is. well uh, be a good timing for, uh, for yeah. you to come over, Craig. Yeah, and the, the venue is actually in, in sorry, it's about halfway between Heathrow and Gatwick Airport. So a, a okay. lo lovely place. Uh, and nice. The idea is that everybody comes in and, and it's residential. So you get to get real up close and personal with um, – some of the brightest minds in the in the world, and, and I think June twenty fifth to 29th is just ooh. about the time the dial pad is going to be seriously attacking the United Kingdom. Right? That actually yeah. sounds like that, that sounds like pretty good timing. And I absolutely love the UK. I I lived there for a year in college, took a year off school, and worked in the city at Lloyd's of London, and then ended up during business school going over there to Oxford for a summer. So I love it over there, James. You know that. Who knew you went to school? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Craig, it's always a thrill to have you. Seriously, you are one of our favorite people. And uh, don't let's not wait five more years for next uh, your next project to come on the VUC. Um, I don't think we have any other questions because I've asked three times. So we're going to let you go because you have other things to do. Sorry that Vincent couldn't make it because he has a French name, Paquet. Right? Yeah, no, and he would have sounded much more impressive than me. He said, you know, the accent helps. Um, okay, hey, hey, loved it, Randy. You you don't look a day older, I'll tell you that, Mike. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, it's I'll see hand. you guys. Yeah. All right, yeah. folks. Thank you Bye very all. much, everybody. Thank you. We're going to close this section out. We're going to go to the picture audiences. All right. right. Here we go. Five, four. I lied. <laughs>